Good evening, everyone. Good to see you all. Uh, I first met Yunji Park and Scott Durstock online at the Art Jewelry Forum website, where they were interviewed. They are the owners of the Sunji Park Gallery in Tucson, Arizona. I was attracted by the experimental, explorative nature of their approach to their gallery and the works within. <laughs> As a jeweler myself, I was taken by the variety of materials and techniques enjoy, employed by the exhibited jewelers. I was also attracted by the wild bejeweled eyeglasses they were wearing and the accompanying photos. Yunji was raised in Korea and uh, attended school in the United States at uh, RISD, Rhode Island School of Design. Scott studied advertising, public relations, and visual arts at Purdue University. Their skills complement one another as they share the responsibilities of their gallery. On the off season, they travel, putting on exhibitions and scouting for artists for the gallery. Their gallery includes unique outdoor spaces and the exhibitions aim to appeal to all the senses, including sometimes food and, and incense. It's quite a unique gallery, which no doubt when we're finished with this presentation, you'll all, we'll all want to visit. I thank you for taking the time from your very, very busy schedule to present to us tonight. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm Scott and this is Yoon. And uh, we met each other back in Chicago many, many moons ago. Um, what year was it? 1987, 1988, it might have been. And, uh, but the gallery, um, you know, we, we got married eventually, had children, raised our children, as we'll talk about, uh, with the arts. And the gallery space we have now, we founded it, the gallery in late uh, 2015, or we opened the gallery in late 2015. Um, but we uh, have this compound about close to 18 to 20 years, mm -hmm. but uh, we've been working on quite a while for a long time to want to do what we want to do. But the interesting thing is that we don't live there completely like 20 years because we've been traveling around the world quite a bit. Uh, but uh, whenever we're here, we actually create this. Yeah. And then um, many before that, I know when we do with my kids and my husband and all this wonderful gentlemen and ladies who helped to create this, this environment or space, we weren't sure what we, we want to be. But the one thing I know we like to we like to uh, the learning space, something that we can share to about art and something we like to explore the, the like unknown things together. So we end up opening up the gallery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so galleries like gives a total that whole asmas that, that that whole thing about learning and sharing and the beauty of aesthetic. It it just uh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So. You know, in preparation for the gallery, um, you know, we've been making connections with artists uh, for years and other gallerists to learning, <clears throat> excuse me, learning about the business. Uh, now, actually, my first job out of college, I worked for a gallery and so did Yoon. Uh, but um, as a gallery owner, it was a different, you know, a whole different ball game. So we met many gallerists and, and talked about the business of of an art gallery and then we started building the infrastructure for the, our idea of a gallery experience which is somewhat different we didn't want a um, a big white box and experience where you know you walk into a big white room and and see a few pieces of art and and that's the experience we wanted something more that was a, a five senses experience. We wanted it to be somewhat antithetical to the digital experience that seems to be pervasive. And we, um, so it was five senses and we wanted it to be about living with art. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a space that showed how people, any person can introduce art into their life in all aspects of their life and enhance their life through art. Um, 
And then also, so more than just living with art, we wanted to talk about living artfully too. And so that's kind of our philosophy. Um, and we're here in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, on our, our logo and everything, we say contemporary art and high craft, but that's kind of a misnomer in that we kind of consider, we don't differentiate between craft and art, uh, but it's, it's kind of the whole, you know, uh, calling Taekwondo Korean karate. You know, so people understand what we're, you know, that may not understand or have met us, kind of understand what we're doing. So our philosophy, though, is we were talking about living with art or living artfully. And we talk about uh, the curation of environment, curation of body and curation of action. So all three of those are important aspects for us. Now, curation of environment is what most people consider art to be, you know, it, uh, but that's just one aspect. Um, by the way, that, that's a ceramic art piece by Joseph Savilli there. Um, curation of body. Um, again, we have some of the best wearable sculpture artists in the world. Um, that's a picture of our middle son who was also, who also went to RISD. Uh, he's wearing a piece by Zilpa Spitzer from Berlin. Uh, that was from her breathing series. And we love wearable sculpture because the artist considers the body and that, and that piece, especially that series, she considered the idea of breathing and how does, how does a piece move on a person as they breathe? And she was going through a, a, a time in her life where she just needed to breathe. She needed to have a break. She, you know, she was going through a rough time. Uh, curation of action. It's a very Zen, I think, mm -hmm. the, our idea of art is very Zen. I mean, action, uh, the piece there is, uh, is a piece, it's Kim dong -hyun, it's Kim dong -hyun from Korea. He's, he's, uh, uh, he has his doctorate in metal smithing or metal work. Yeah. Um, but, well, would you like to talk about that? So curation of the action is that you know, or the wabasabi, there, there's, there's a moment that artists know to, when to stop. And then you, when you hold their, uh, their artwork, actually can connect their energy or connecting to the artist, mind or the spirit. So, um, yeah, um, I think you used to explain better than I was. But I want to go back to wearable sculpture. We don't, we actually, the words we're using wearable sculpture because we really think they're uh, when they're not wearing it, actually, all these artists ask to display it rather than um, the, put them in a drawer or what, whatnot. They wanted to uh, kind of design in themselves to live with it. Now, so it's like your, your, your bodies, I feel like I'm, I'm honoring. Uh, he just worked today uh, because I curated my body because I feel like I am a gallery and honoring this wonderful, incredible sculpture I'm wearing. So I put together how I want to put together. So I, I like to, I'm kind of, kind of a little teasing about bring bling bling, but it's like fine jewelry, which is like years, years, this mastery, a master who goldsmith to do the working on their fine jewelry verse to wear of sculpture. And I think people read about our article, they understand why we put together and how we, we uh, uh, display or uh, wearing it. And a lot of my clients got fascinated by things that I putting together to wearing at wear of sculpture verse to fine jewelry. And they used to wear one that one, one, one way the other. And then now they like to mix kind of together to to, um, to showing it or curating their body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of barriers that are broken down when people start thinking about what can I accept as art? What makes me feel good about a piece of, say a piece of pottery um, that they use to drink their morning coffee. And now she was mentioning like a, a wabasabi, 
uh, artist. You know, wabasabi is perfection and imperfection. And, you know, like she was saying, that the, an artist, a wabasabi artist, comes to a point where it's not perfect, but it's finished. And when they let their hands go of it and they fire it, and then I, as a as a end user, or a, pick it up, I'm holding hands with him or her when she had that inception that that's done. And that's a great feeling to have that you carry on in the morning. You know, I'm picking up, I'm having coffee, not just with myself, but I'm also holding hands with this artist who created this piece. And I think once you look at it through that lens, I think um, it, it, it's very Zen. Yeah. So but um, we raised our sons, of course, kind of, well, this is our philosophy. So we kind of raised our sons with art and, um, you know, we kept, we restricted, you know, it wasn't a normal childhood from them, but it wasn't abnormal. I mean, we restricted their access to digital, you know, television, movies, video games and phones um, because we wanted to encourage, uh, we didn't want them to, create their interpretation of the world through what other person, people are trying to present them how the world is. We wanted them to approach the world themselves. So we encourage experimentation and interaction with their, their physical environment. We supplied access to any kind of tool or material that they wanted to experiment with. So they did everything, leather work, uh, metal work, candle making. I mean, they really went through the gamut. And cooking. Cooking, environmental pieces. And as a result, they're always creating and anything that was left out might be turned into an art project. And, then, and there were many environmental projects that, you know, um, you know, that kind of uh, found their way into the garden for a while here and there. You know, this was a piece of ceramics that was on the back porch and my son took it and he turned it into a luchador cat where, you know, that, that was when he was and when he was in middle school. Yeah, that was a middle school piece. And like I said, anything could end up being art. You know, a light switch could have turned into something. So it was kind of fitting that when we opened the gallery, the first show that we did in the main gallery was, uh, we called it a family affair. And it featured the works of, of our three sons. And you can see in the background, the other part of the gallery, had the other artists that you know we had brought into the gallery or to to start the gallery. Um, so the reason we we're showing you this because what is important to us and how we become the where we at and right now where we at and uh, all the artists how they respond to us and how much they like to work with us. I guess this is our bragging, but. We really have incredible artists that because of our concept, because our philosophy, it's been only been six years. It's like in gallery world, I guess we're still infant, maybe uh, unborn, maybe we're still in, uh, you know, inside the mother's womb or something. Yeah, because some other gallery that a mentor I have is like 40 years. And we've been open up six years. So we're still growing and we're still, um, I guess, making some mistake or something. But anyway, we, we keep driving and keep uh, working on to improvement. But this is our part of us and very important to, to I want to, the people to realize we're understand it or connected. So that's why we're maybe showing some of the, our children's work and how we started. And the beginning of it was very interesting about our, our whole family is the fully. And I still, my kids are uh, driving five hours sometime just to come to help the opening and, and maybe they go back and get night and things like that. And then, you know, their girlfriend sometimes come over helping me the cooking and I hire the lady. And, but it's, this is all part of it, passion. Part of it, loving our artist to do what we do and commitment. And we have a four, uh, five color that we present in. The red is passion. That's our color. Gold is a precious, never changes in, 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 in a beautiful air glow. And, and gray is kind of in between uh, clients to artists that we want to be responsible. The gray is known for symbolized as responsibility and kind of black and white. 
And there's, a, there, there's more than black and white in the world because grow, growing up Korea in one point, we had a very black and white to the way we educating or way we understand the woman and everything is very dry and black and white, not anymore, which is I celebrate. So, so I love gray, so gray and then black is the observing all these wonderful colors. And then the white is reflection of that and, and you know, uh, the, the purity of the study beginning of something. So those are all colors are presented in our gallery. It's very important to us, the part of it. Well, coming from an arts background ourselves, you know, in creating the exhibition spaces, the gallery and the gardens, and assembling the artists and then presenting their works. It's, it's been a wonderful creative process for us. We had two exhibitions in Seoul, one in Busan, and we can take a look at some of this. This is the, uh, this was the uh, uh, postcard or advertisement for that show. The gallery space, that's, that's my youngest son. He, he accompanied us on that trip. So he's painting, the uh, character that we put at the entrance of the show. So there he is, he's, because the show is called Different Tastes. We didn't want to say, it was a show um, that uh, was introduced, introducing American and European art jewelry to Korea. And at the time that was, you know, there weren't many people doing that. Um, so there's Yoon in the gallery. We there's actually... my son in the gallery. What they're painting is they're turning it into a huge, a uh, meat locker. So the paintings on the wall are a meat locker. And then from there, we added in to make a feast because like, again, we didn't, it was about different tastes. We weren't saying that the European or American art jewelry was better. It's just a different taste, it's a different style. Um, in fact, some of our favorite art jewelers happen to be Korean. I mean, they've got a great tradition there in art jewelry. Um, so the center section is also a part where we had, um, uh, you'll see, we put in foods and mix them with the art jewelry, and then we had a video presentation in the back. I don't know. It was a multiple day event getting this ready. I don't know. We can explain to you everything is that every, I think because my background is a painter and plus the uh, master degree on art and everything. So therefore, um, I mean, I, I like to symbolize, I like to have everything has meaning. Everything I wanted to, every little part of it, everything what we do have a symbolism or a meaning to it. I never done things, just do it. But that word to me is a little scary to me, just do it. I mean, it's a sponge and very, uh, um, what is it? A wonderful word, wonderful. But to my now is to myself, um, I'm always kind of uh, like to give it a meaning or some sort of a symbolism or a reason to do what I do, what we do. So I, I don't know, we can go into the every detail to the explanation of uh, things, why the hell was and what, what not, but everything there display was, every one of them, every little dishes and every choice that we made, the food has all has a meaning. So you can see the progression of it. Beyond painting the gallery, uh, we also had to go and, and do some shopping. So here, we, it was wonderful going to the flower market there in Seoul. We did it at the restaurant too, mm -hmm. because I really want, because in Korea is really almost obsessed. All the chefs around the world come to study about these fermentations and it's just like really booming at the time and still now too. The food is just magnificent, unbelievable. So all, all because I wanna ride on that. It's like almost like a ride on the boat. I wanna be part of it. I wanna be, uh, understand uh, uh, that what's happening at the time and, and try to connect it. So I decided to all different tastes. So therefore, uh, and we did it actually at the restaurant. And the, and the first the incarnation. First, yeah, it, it, it was. <laughs> It was fun. It was incredible. All the things, everything that uh, jewelry was displayed in the plate, the beautiful setup of beautiful flowers and plates, and it looked almost banquet. You know, it's like, I don't know, you saw the movie, The Velvet Fist. It's almost like a feast of the beauty of the aesthetic and beauty of uh, jewel, like the wearable sculpture. And some people can actually put it on their body and 
and it can be complain, it can be satisfaction, it can be doing, it's just like a, eating a food. It's like a taste, is that, is that taste bad? It tastes good, it's sweet, sour. I want you people to say how light is beautiful, making me feel like a queen, but how light that it is as a contemporary work. And or say, uh, this making me feel like what? I don't know, but I'm saying it's like, I wanted to have a conversation. I want to be contemporary. I want to be involved, evolved. I want to be try to people to experiment on that. And I think that's one thing that we try to do. We try, try to create environments or vignettes or, or themes uh, that invite people to look at the art in different ways that there's a um, right there is that's a, a butcher shop and you'll see that that kind of ties into the theme there you can see we started hanging in the meat locker we have uh, the feast starting and I think in there, I think in the video, I can't see the video right now. I think in the back, yeah. I don't know if any of you know Viva Shoots from there in New York, but that's a picture of her up there in the top corner of the video presentation. Um, so this is how we were presenting. So yeah, we put them in a uh, raw meat because uncooked purposely. Because but you'll also notice like under the table there, uh, you'll notice some onions. Yeah, onions everywhere because I realized that the, a lot of goldsmith that, that I talked to or knowing all my, my friends and, and they start with the silver and gold and, and something that as a goldsmith, they always go through, just like a chef. We cannot cook without onions, like around the world, even Mong the Mongolian and some other work part I heard, they always use the onion too. So, so it's like the basic ingredient, you know? So I like to kind of acknowledge that to this is, this is like almost like a, uh, uh, you can cook. You can use this raw meat to the cook about cooking and you can, this, this jewelry that is like a different taste. So you can wear it to make a taste out of it. So you may recognize some of the artists. Um, we took a lot of German and American artists. Um, you know, one of the professor told me, uh, they're very supportive in this, it was, I think maybe my breaking, but it was an incredible show. And everybody was kind of amazed about things. But anyway, uh, one of the professors told me that nobody ever brought that many selection, which is we had a close to 500 pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was quite a show. Yeah, there was one of the professors from Seoul University. Um, so it was from Europe to America to, uh, yeah, so it's just me. And in the background, next to the butcher, it says Dalun Mat, which it's in Korean right. means different tastes. Do you have guys any questions to wanted to ask? Question? No? They cannot hear me. We, we can hear you, but uh, if uh, we have everybody muted right now because it was distracting, but if people... Oh, okay. If people yeah. want to have some questions, uh, you want to throw, uh, just put them in the chat, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, one of us will interrupt and uh, ask the question. That's okay. Okay, it's okay. And here's the card. Uh, this was the advertisement for the uh, show that we did in Busan. But I, I, this is briefly. I want to explain is that. Do you notice that I have like nearby my womb, uh, nearby my because I buried the three boys, and so like nearby the womb, I'm offering something as a female, like beautiful, this incredible art piece. So I was all holding, carrying like either either basket or glass or goes well to, to what, what I'm wearing and they're all kind of offering. And uh, I'm not, uh, if I don't know if you're familiar with Busan. Busan is uh, all the way south. In, uh, in Korea and it's right by the ocean. So we chose a lot of uh, items from the, you know, that would be related to the ocean or to that part. Those are some pieces, some from our atelier and some from others. This was a- The reason I'm laughing, little smiling, giggling is that actually we wanted to fish because it's the ocean. The Busan's very known for very interesting, that wonderful, incredible, uh, fish, the fish markets and the auction going on and every morning and all that. <laughs> we 
past this time. <laughs> we couldn't do fish because it was very, very hot summer. And, and also, I don't think it's going to last that long. It's going to be stinky in the whole gallery. <laughs> so, <laughs> even like at there, the last time we did the new tour, that was only last about three, three days. And after that, we just put them in a plate. But plate itself was beautiful by designed by a very well-known Korean artist, Chang Yong. So we did it just beautiful plates on it. But this is the same thing. This very famous artist that, I forgot his name, but uh, uh, the artist, the dishes that we use. But uh, we had about close, this one was all exotic uh, vegetable from ocean. So it lasts at least week. But in the, what happened is in Busan, it's very highly moisture because of the, by the ocean and it was this. In Korea, it's, it's because the, uh, the, the heat and the moisture, it can be really, really hot. So, so this one was set up more like, a, again, like a feast. Um, it was a different kind of gallery. And so. Um, Scott, uh, Judy is asking if the artists knew beforehand how the work would be displayed. Did they know that? Yes, I, yeah, I briefly talked about it. I didn't tell them detail because I want to kind of surprise them or if they don't like it, I don't know what can I say. <laughs> but I think the reason <laughs> I want to make it speak very loud because this is like uh, the second show, second time I went to Korea to um, giving this kind of show, but the, uh, I want to be speak loud in, in, in other words, almost like I want to scream for, for attention. And I wanted to, to people to respond in a very different way. So I wasn't really explaining every detail, but I think that they briefly they know what, where I'm having show, where what, what I'm gonna do, but I didn't tell her the detail. But I, I haven't had any complaint or no, no, yelling or anything. As a matter of fact, they're they're really uh, impressed or they're very supportive. And you know, think about like, but I got yelled by one of the uh, gentlemen who's butcher men, uh, you know, I don't know this, this culture too, but used to, I'm sure. But in, in Korea, we still have that. It's even when I said to about cow, it's a uh, cow's like a heart. And, and there's a special name for it. You don't call cow heart. So he was correcting me actually several times. It's almost like, I'm not going to sell it to you if you're not correcting it. <laughs> so, and then we have to order a special uh, pig uh, leg. We only use the joke bar, which is up to that point. Nobody really used the shoulder. So I have to wait about close three weeks to get the whole shoulder. And then I put the like 20,000 or whatever, the, the bracelet put it on to the, this pig. Pig is a hen. So, and the pearl too. So what I'm saying is that, but none of them had a like, oh my God, that was gross or anything. Uh, never got yelled by, but. The show yeah. was actually, I mean, it was a continuous, it was very, it was a hit. In fact, we had not planned on doing Busan, uh, but what happened is there were so many people saw the show. So many people were cycling through and, and like we had several of the professors sending their students in to see the work and, and some were even doing sketches, et cetera. And so we did extend the, that show, and then we got invited to other galleries too to do the same show, and that's and that's what we did. Then can I may I ask because I like to learn together today. It's not like a me to be just the stepping on you, and you guys like the, that question. Just curious, like why they're asking this question. <laughs> can I ask the person they're asking? Maybe she might concern something. I just want to know what why did the question come up. I think it's a great question, but mm -hmm. yeah. in fact, yeah, during the thing, uh, we didn't. We thought that maybe more of the the audience would might find conflict with it. We didn't hear anything. The only person that did somewhat didn't like it was a, a Buddhist nun, but other than that. That was it. Yeah. So, uh, but she didn't complain. She just quietly looked at it and then she went out quickly. But it's not something, but in Korea, it's a lot. Very, very meat eater. They love meat, period. So, uh, except the religious matter or re reason. But anyway, just I like to go back to that person who asking that question what was yeah. the question the reason was? That was the, I was just wondering, you know what they thought or or um, you know if 
if they would have done something, perhaps a different piece, if they knew it was going to be on meat, or if it made no difference to them, or if they were excited by it. You know, so many raises so many questions. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, the, so, so the short answer is no. In fact, I think you know uh, they were kind of excited. It was it was a it was, it was a forward thinking, especially at the time for the you know that show and and I think they were glad to be in it. Yeah, let's so, also take a look at this show here. Also, one thing though, I thought about just like I explained that everything is like hard to let into. I have everything reason, so therefore some other like put him in a raw meat on it. It has to be metal or something not going to change with the blood and everything. So I, I mean, I know what I was doing. <laughs> so it wasn't any problem. And so this gallery had many ga um, smaller galleries. So this was the dessert gallery there with- um, We call it as a we, Well, we displayed sweet, it with yeah. sweets and it was with uh, some Murakamis there. Uh, this was a, a, an article, a magazine article that came out about that one. We actually uh, had quite a few articles written about this show. And then I'm just gonna show you a couple and it, we've done so many, I mean, in six years, I think we've done about 30 shows, 30 different exhibitions. So we're not gonna go through 30 exhibitions. I just pulled a couple of images talking about how we create different environments for our artists' works and, and also how we invite viewers to see how they can live with art. You know, this show here, this exhibition, uh, we're looking on the, the wall there are some works by uh, uh, Nhi Chun, who at the time was in Munich. Uh, we also have Yongju Kim, who uh, her works are right next to it. That that's, uh, She creates her works out of Velcro. Uh, she did her master's degree at RISD. And in the background, um, you can see some work by uh, Eve Klein, uh, Eva Mew Klein, the son of Eve Klein. Probably you guys very familiar, yeah. right? So. so, and then he did some objects and some uh, other works there. This is another pen by Nmi Chan. This actually, this is in uh, the collection of the Metropolitan Museum now in the permanent collection. This a, lot of our art, a lot of our artists are either, uh, it's a museums and many collections from around the world. Yeah, so one of the things that we did is that actually, you know, we added the mirrors uh, for visual effect and also so that people could see themselves in, in with the piece. Um, this piece here, by the way, is uh, created from cow small intestine. And so the artist created it from cow small intestine. And what she was talking about is how we uh, try to disguise ourselves. And so she's using something from the inside, something visceral, and she's bringing it out to the outside and making it beautiful. And it's expressing, uh, for instance, she had uh, in the last, I think it was the last one, she had, uh, the red one is a fox, so wily fox, a, a vibrant bluebird, a, a bold eagle, and not bald, bold, um, eagle. So she's showing that basically when we disguise ourselves, we're actually showing what what we really want to be on the inside and letting it come out and so she's saying it shouldn't be afraid to be doing that and it, it's fantastic pieces why i included this is leslie wardlaw he, she's from here in in uh in tucson a uh, wearable sculpture she concentrates primarily on earrings one reason i wouldn't show this too is the um the way that we displayed at these metal um uh display boards after the show we sold them because we encourage our, our our clients don't just wear the the piece you know in your dressing room in your bathroom or in your closet find a place and start displaying it you know the the piece that Yoon's wearing is it's a beautiful piece and you know i would definitely have it hanging We've been, yeah, we're very fortunate. So, yeah. yeah, so I have our permanent collections and things like that. So we actually. Again, just showing different ways that we could present uh, the artwork. Um, and again, we'll say more um, That's the piece that she's wearing there, the brooch. That, that's one of the Velcro pieces that I was speaking about. And, and that's Eva Mew Klein 
with her right there. And oh, that's some of Eve's work in that same show. He, he's, uh, he's experimenting with uh, uh, 3D printing. Uh, he builds his own 3D printing machines and he also has the laser cutting machines uh, where he cuts natural material and integrates it with the uh, man-made synthetic materials. It's really incredible strong work. What I really love about what he does is just like a Jim Dime said, like tool. Actually, he's creating own tool to making his artwork. Yeah. I think that's very powerful. Yeah. Um, again, here's one of our artists. Uh, you'll see some, when we do a tour of the garden, uh, you'll see some of her, her artwork. Um, but this is a show that we just did. It was called Stages and Staging. And it was talking about the stages of, of plant life, you know. And versus the human life. Yeah, and human life, of course. And then, um, but it was also called about staging, where we were encouraging people to, and the, as the show evolved, the flowers changed, the arrangements changed, and we were encouraging clients to see this piece or one of these pieces in their own place and how could they interact with it and create a new piece the, an evolving piece that reflects, you know, the season, the flowers, and what, what they find enjoyable. Again, creation. Um, here's one that, this is a, a plant that's somewhat a weed around these parts. Mm -hmm. uh, Datura, I think it's called. But, you know, different stage of life and those. Um, uh, Scott, Scott what, I just wanted to ask, are, were those vessels um, porcelain? Yes, they are. Yeah, the porcelain, and I believe she extruded them and then created them from that, from extrusions. This one, uh, this is an air plant, and you can see another floor piece at the, at, at the back of the gallery there. Now, again, we're, we're, we encourage, we did it as a, as a uh, wall piece, uh, but we encourage our, um, our clients, and well, I guess it's, it's coming up, to, to display it how they want it. It's their piece and it's their environment and what's gonna bring them joy. And, and you'll see one of those pieces that was on the wall later on, I have a picture, you'll see it in a home. So what we did, especially during the uh, pandemic is we helped uh, clients to integrate their art. You know, maybe they have a collection and they were feeling like they were tired of looking at the same picture in the same place, et cetera. And they asked us to, to create a new environment for it or to work with them because we it, it's definitely something we do as a, as a team. Um, this is a, this was an artist studio and he had a large collection of his own paintings. And what we did is we helped them go through all the paintings through, I don't know, about 40 well, years actually, of painting. Yeah, for not only that, we actually create the entire whole, uh, we constructed the interior. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we actually created the, his own gallery. Yeah, we so turned it from an artist studio into a gallery to space. To the end was like a floor to ceiling to the wall to everything. So mm -hmm. we created the whole, yeah. So that's what we do. I mean, I my background as RISD, I studied painting, but I do, I studied a lot of interior design, architect, so we can do all that. So it was very, it was super, it was wonderful experience to pandemic time comes and people rather wanted to buy, wear a sculpture or find jewelry. They wanted to try to create their own space in a different way. So we kind of accommodate it and support it. We can plug it into our own art. Even this gallery is not only his work, actually our, some of the, our artist works actually display it mm -hmm. to, and he loves it. So, so that's yeah, this piece. Is, yeah, designed by us and even furniture that he had and we could kind of modify it or I designed it and our one of the person who furniture maker, we created it. So it's just everything is, yeah, we, we, we did it. So. Yeah, it's, it's an assembly, it's a, a space. We really had fun, I mean, throw, looking at his collection of paintings and then helping to narrow it down to the pieces that would work the strongest in this space you know he didn't want to get rid of his his uh no actually he does but i said no <laughs> well, okay. he so a lot of his drawings are still in here and so he can share that with his 
his family, they can sit down. There's a TV on the other wall where they can share the time and the kitchenette, et cetera. So it's a space where they, they can gather around. Um, we created all, of course, the custom there. Now there's the client that I was talking about. So she's using them as a table piece rather than a wall piece. Mm -hmm. And you can also see there, there's another piece by uh, uh, another artist that we carry, Kazuma Sambe. Uh, and you'll see some of his pieces in the garden. And outdoor. So I think what we'd like to do now is, um, let's see if we can make this transition happen again. We were lucky enough to make it happen in the practice. So we're gonna go ahead and head out to the garden and we're gonna try to uh, show you the way it would be for a client uh, coming into, into the gallery and, and what, what it's like there. So that's the outside of the main gallery. Now, I didn't mention it before, but what we did is we bought uh, uh, three houses, adjacent houses, and we created a garden and gallery complex from there. Yeah, and we just added a fourth, but um, so this is what people would see when they first enter. And you can see there's Yoon, that's her name right there, our logos. <laughs> okay, why don't we head into the garden, please? And so we're following kind of a European or Asian model where we've infilled the gallery and garden spaces into a place where you normally wouldn't see it. So it's not on, you know, a, a main area where you would, uh, again, expect to see a big white box gallery. This is a piece by uh, Aurore Chabot. It's part of her Traveling Sanctuary series. Um, and so this is the gallery space, or the gallery gardens, I should say. So we have several different gallery or uh, garden spaces and we'll go ahead and, and tour through. So each of the walls that we have here symbolize something different. This is of course water. Um, this one with the chimeneas is fire. And during the, when we have uh, openings, the, 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 they would be lit with uh, some fires. And over there is earth. Right now we don't have any plants there because we wanted to show a straight piece there. Uh, this is a relief in the background from uh, Roe Trout Klein, uh, Eve Klein's uh, wife. Um, Scott, could you talk a little bit about the media, the media, the different media that we're seeing, the mediums that they're made from? Absolutely. So the one by Roach Trout, uh, this one is uh, uh, water cut aluminum that's powder coated. So those are from her drawings. Um, that kind of from glass. Mm -hmm. This one is a glass piece. Um, from Zach Tyman. He's now based in Hawaii. And this is beautiful piece. It's lighting up in a an, night and glow and it's magnificent. And we actually, this is a limited edition. So we sold a couple of pieces, but it just, I'm so thrilled about this. And you just, you can, you can enjoy it in a day and night and just, it's different. Very, very beautiful piece. There's an oil lamp that goes with, that is lit at night. And this is another piece by Aurora Chabot. Oops. Last time we did this, my shadow wasn't a <laughs> difficulty. Um, Aurora is the, um, the head of ceramics at the University of Arizona. And uh, there's the sculpture garden. But before we go there, I'll show you the other side of the gallery. So this is... Uh, Wow, the lighting is completely different than the last time we did it. So now this is a ceramic pieces by Joseph Civilli, who did his formal studies in Norway. Um, he chose to use the medium of uh, clay or ceramic to uh, for its distinction and uh, connection to the earth. And what he does is on the the raw clay body he grows plant matter and then fires it. 
So we don't really want to call him ceramic artist because he happened to using the, the clay, the earthly material rather than something else because it completely connect, match with what he's trying to, to say, his concepts and ideas. So what he's, he's his uh, work explores the transitory um, nature of material. And so he did uh, residencies in Japan and Korea. And so for instance, you can see this heavy shouldered Shigaraki clay uh, vase. It's very kind of um, Japanese traditional. And inside you can see some moon jars that he did. Um, we'll head over here to the uh, sculpture garden. Oh, and I, there's another piece here. This, this is a performance piece. It's been in states of uh, it's been about change. About three years. Yeah, about three years. An unfired clay piece that he did. This is uh, the sculpture garden. Right now we have pieces from Kazuma Sambe. He is, a, uh, again, a ceramics focused artist. And he, his work is all about uh, food and what do we uh, consider as food or what do we accept as food? What does it mean? Pure, natural, fresh, what does that mean? And coming from Japan, those are questions he, he wanted to explore. And what is the effect of color? Why do we, why is, uh, you know, cola, uh, cola colored <laughs> when it actually doesn't need to be uh, in the middle this is a uh, rock star by Don Porcella he's a, a California based artist he's now up in uh, Minnesota um, yep actually he did uh, has a show there in in uh, New York um, and he did the holiday windows at air in 2018. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, uh, they were pipe cleaner sculptures and that was his work. This is the gallery's guest house. And I'll just show you another little garden area that we have here, a sitting area. Um, this is a little tower that we built that overlooks the sculpture garden. And the reason we built it is so that people could kind of get an idea of what uh, now, right now, the sculptures are, are smaller pieces that can be interior or exterior, but when we have larger pieces, what they can do is go up there and then imagine and look down on them and kind of imagine what they're going to look like from their homes if they have a second story. <laughs> so this is kind of a fun place. It's also good for seeing the mountains. I have to ask what kind of a tree that is. Well, it's actually uh, not a tree. It's a, it's a, it's a it's more like a tower built in between these oleanders. Oh, the oleanders, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we're, we're surrounded by oleanders. Oh, you know, asked me to show you briefly over here. Um, this is an aviary that we had, but we've since moved the birds and we're turning it into a tea garden area Right now, um, I'm embarrassed to say I had my canoe in there because I was repairing it for the season. <laughs> and I don't know what the weather's like there in New York right now. Uh, here, it's about 92 degrees. <laughs> oh my God. Tomorrow though, we're gonna be freezing. It's gonna be down to about 80. <laughs> we're more like, you're 92 is more like 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's rough, I'll tell you. Um, the, again, on the side of the, uh, now this area right here is where we, uh, we do outside openings and um, we um, usually have the food and everything set up right outside. And in the guest house through that door is a kitchen so they, the people that are helping us can easily go ahead and um, access. access to the things. Yeah. So right here is, well, you want to explain? 
Angels Among the Live With Us. Yeah, this is a, a little project that we're doing. It's called Angels Among Us. And it's uh, it's commissioned. We do it as commission for uh, clients where we'll come to their homes and put these, you know, cherubesque. But as you notice that a uh, color changes to different wall. If a client has a white wall, you can turn into white. You can have a pink wall turn into pink. And it just as you as you see that the door, the blue door, so and just turn into blue. So they're just disappearing and camouflaging it, but they will live with us. Kind of. We were trying to do the Spanish and Mexican and kind of here origin kind of have some flair. Now, this is another garden that we have that's hooked onto the, the gallery uh, guest house. And this is a kind of, we call it the garden of the saints. It's more Sonoran, um, Mexican, our, following the folk art, et cetera, of this region. And uh, so we call it the Saints Garden. Uh oh, just flushed a bird there. And then I was saying a while back that um, it's actually hard to find a variety of saints. So we have five Francis's. And we we'll order some more, so hopefully that we can have many more <laughs> in the future and sitting area and following again following the spirit of this area of the country um, again when we have the tea uh, gatherings all these spaces will be open for everyone um, so following the um, spirit of this area we also have a grotto to our lady of guadalupe and uh, over there is the back end of the uh, aviary. Actually, this is a favorite place for a lot of people to visitors to come and hang out. So this is a, uh, uh, we call this the 180 gallery and not, there's nothing, 180 doesn't have any kind of uh, significant meaning. Mainly we call it the 180 gallery because it's 180 okay. square feet. <laughs> and uh, it's a area that we usually have video playing, uh, you know, uh, usually the artist who's in the main gallery, they'll have a process video showing and, and it's the room also is set up for for 220 110 electric also water and some of the younger artists want to have this space and and create a contemporary insta installation Next door is what we call the dirty shop, and that's filled with uh, metalworking and tools. woodworking tools, anything that we need to create art. And then this passage here will lead us to the Korean Sonoran Garden. Here we have a shade sail covering this area. Shade is a uh, pretty valuable commodity out here in Arizona, as you can imagine. Again, so, this, because of the way we display the art, the how we live with an outdoor, we just got to be commissioned to the entire whole building to filling in. So he's going to be finished by it in a September. So we're going to install the like huge, it's, it's like entire building we're doing. <laughs> so soon as a client saw this and that she loves it. So she says, she asked me to design it, to go to her, uh, house and then just we looked at it and we made some plan so we're going to do installing a whole building okay. and those those are uh koi pieces by kazuma sambe and this little area here um the dutch doors in that area there is a is a kitchen area where we can serve drinks and and snacks too so 
the whole area is can be used as an entertaining space and drawing people to art. This is the entrance into the Korean Sonoran Garden. This is following kind of Korean aesthetics, but using plants that can be adapted to the Southwest. And in the background, you can see there's a, a koi pond in the shape of a, it's a circle. Circle which, means uh, in, in Asia is heaven and the square means earth. So we play with kind of that heavenly water we're offering to nature. And the square, like this garden is all about heaven and earth. So can earth can make the heaven, heaven heavenly earth and things like that. But it's- The square is represented here in the uh, gazebo where people congregate uh, do tea and even Korean barbecues. Or tea salmon. And so that's uh, back there is the uh, gazebo. And as this garden goes on, there's um, other sculptures. Yeah, it's totem poles, and there's many uh, art artworks to display to the, our artists around the whole area. But I don't think we have that many time to do get look at everything. Yeah. And then a lemon tree here that we uh, enjoy very much. We do enjoy very much. I was saying earlier that we. Uh, we make our own limoncello. And let's head to the gallery now. And this is, this is the gallery space. And here are some of the artists that we represent. We have some encaustics here by Don Puccella. Uh, art jewelry by a number of artists, Valerie Mitchell, uh, amongst many others and some ceramic works by, again, Kazuma Sambe. These are the moon jars by Joseph Civilli. Again, plant matter that has been frozen in time. And you'll notice that we have artwork, you know, what people would consider to be art and what people will consider to be craft. Um, for instance, over here, you'll see that Joseph Civilli, we have pieces by Joseph Civilli here in uh, cup or tea cups or ceramic cups by him, also ceramic cups by Susan Biner and also by Aurore Chabot. And we, so Susan Biner, you may be familiar with her. She's the head of ceramics at Arizona State University. And there are some pieces by Susan Biner. Uh, Scott, the uh, yeah. shelf, the shelf that those cups are on is also gorgeous. Is that, oh, thank you. Is that by any artist that, uh, uh, that uh, you? Or... That was our design. Gorgeous. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. so we, um, we did that and we decided to mix that with, uh, you know, petrified wood too. So the shelf actually over here, you'll see is petrified wood along with uh, mesquite wood, which is, you know, very common here in the Midwest or the Southwest. So again, uh, the, about terms of everything here, we designed it to be, to, to way we, how we want to show, but uh, I'm, I'm very much, I'm, I'm, I love to play with or design it by biomorphic and geometric. Because something that I grew up in, uh, in Korea is like very, we appreciate the nature of the biomorphic shape. So um, 
I love Miss Van Der Rohe and all the Frank River White are straight lines, of course, very geometric, but sometimes it's like I can't even breathe after for a while. <laughs> I really like biomorphic planes. So geometric biomorphic would like to, to design kind of in a way, make it work together. So it's like very biomorphic in the line versus to to the geometric, the glass kind of, you know, the very straight line. So here, same thing. We like the, the flow with the nature of the wood and the verse to very geometric line. So everything that what we hear is designed to be biomorphic and geometric. Yeah. And then this is a rather interesting, again, we're copying the live edge on the mirror, but uh, this closet is our closet of curiosities. And it's an area that we, uh, we give as an installation space to one of our artists. It, it, it rotates. Right now it happens to be Cindy Sumner. She's an art jeweler and, she, and an art jeweler who uh, works in um, fine metals, of course, and, and fine jewelry elements. But also this series is, um, are made from sliced Hummel figurines. And so very interesting, um, she'll keep just an element, oh, I'll show you like a can. face in a piece, yeah, but eyes. then she mixes it with 18 karat gold, um, some chalcedony or this There's one. Eyes. There's your hand. Nope. Oh, I have to say that is the best use of Hummels I've ever seen. <laughs> so I have to agree. And so that's a two finger ring there. Um, but she, you know, I think one of the greatest compliments we had a, a, a woman who says, who wears some gorgeous fine jewelry, uh, but she has a pair of earrings by Cindy Sumner. And she says, you know, when I go to the store, I get more comments about these earrings than I do anything else I wear. <laughs> they really are neat. And here's the main gallery and it's where we've been sitting at the beginning of it. The main uh, gallery is works by Bill Dambrova and he's a Phoenix based artist. We chose his works because they're so, sculptural. yeah, they really are sculptural pieces and they have a lot that's being said within them. And also the uh, jewelry like, you know, I can, almost like I can put them in my hands and grab it and I want to wear it in my chest or my hair or my body. It's very much like a uh, uh, very jewelry, it has a lot of jewelry form, the wearable sculpture form and then sculptural. And we don't usually, people kind of, our clients kind of surprise because um, we don't usually do two mention. We are very object and sculptural gallery, sculpture gallery. It was kind of surprised, but Again, as a contemporary artist, he, we even sent it the measurement and everything. He came here, he filled the energy of the whole space, he loved the window. So he created the, every one of these paintings, actually he created a new way of the how he want to fit. So that is truly contemporary way to show me even the painting. Yeah. So the interaction so, is much dynamic. So when, since you mentioned it, I'll, I'll go ahead and show something very interesting. So um, he knows uh, when he came, we had the row trout. Uh, I, I hope you can see it in the background there, the, the row trout relief by the fountain. Um, and then we also have these three dimensional objects, vessel shapes by Eve Klein Jr., Eva Mew Klein. So on this piece that he was, did for the show, he decided to pay an homage to both of them by painting this edge in Eve Klein blue. So it's an homage to Roe Trout and Eva Mew Klein. Can I, I've been trying to get a glimpse of what Yoon is wearing the piece. Is that a, oh, absolutely. Is that a fiber piece? This, oh yeah, mixed combined, mixed media. This is a Hijukim, something that I'm going to show you. I will call Let's that. take a look right now. Yeah. Hijukim is based in Korea. Um, this piece is, um, it's electroformed copper enameled along with, um, the, with fabric. Yeah, fabric. Yeah. Not fabric, it's a, a yarn. Yep, wrapped. 
And it, so it. let's take a look. At, this is uh, what you affectionately calls her candy drawer. So every uh, a lot of clients they love it. Oh, let me let me look at your uh, candy drawer. Or he, they said, is there any new things in the candy drawer? So. So here are some more pieces by Hee Kim, the same artist that, that, that Yoon yeah. is wearing. This so is this piece, perfect. and this is also Zilke Spitzer from Berlin. And then again, more pieces by Hee Kim. Yeah, and then this book is just a magnificent. She explains how to marry a marker, what colors the, uh, 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 take it to become the way that red colors are. So he's really uh, explaining it, educating it, and what it takes to be this kind of layer of beautiful piece that how come about. So that. Oh, can I tell you something? You know, in the future, if you want to know more about us, because we done it so many ways at the fees clients, and some, they can come at the. Uh, because of the pandemic. So we, we work with them, just the individual, uh, what's called, uh, what's called Facebook? FaceTime <laughs> usually. FaceTime, FaceTime, the individual explainer where we show it, they request us to, to, to show in things and we've done so many, that's why I think we drive and then pandemic time. So if you want to know more about it or each artist or the way we do things individually, we're glad to do so. Yep. FaceTime or Skype video, however, you know, um, more pieces. Uh, these are wonderful brooches. I have collected one myself by Gun Mi Chan. Uh, some pieces by Biba Schutz. Uh, Hilda Leis from Hamburg. Suri Greta from Paris. Um, yeah. Here's some more pieces from the um, so, breathing series. Actually, the one son, my son wears one is very similar to this, but they're on sold. And then this is another one. And then here is uh, another brooch by Unmi Chan. Yeah, I want to show you this. I'm so proud of this book. It's wood, um, intestine, and silver. Yeah. Now, while she's putting that away, I want to show you that, again, part of our curation is that we choose artists that are going to be, that work well with the, the main gallery show. And so on this one, we chose works by uh, Jung Hae Park. Jung Hae Park is a fabric artist. Um, use hand dyed silk is what she usually makes her creations from. And she draws her inspiration from floral forms usually. But uh, so we thought that this one matches very well with the, the, the colors and shapes and in this, uh, this work. Would you, or would you like to? You can take a look at a couple more drawers, perhaps. So this is from same artist, Hiju, and then this is Kim Yumi. It's all really, oh, I just love this book. Color, color gym combined. We have one with carnelian and one in amethyst. Yeah. And then uh, some is, of our, yeah. our uh, uh, you know, our limited. galleries are very much showing one of a kind, the limited edition. I should not say production line, but if, when I'm saying production line is making more than a 20, 30, they keep making them until they, they're just maybe two, three years, but nothing is really production line like factory making. But um, yeah, so all age and all different people can enjoy their uh, purchase. So this is a uh, Korean design. It's more like a birthday, a wedding anniversary, and the uh, baby shower. The all hundred percent silver. 
very popular for, you know. Yeah, we almost all gifts. sold out. This is only where left, but this is all Korean brooch, kind of a little bit more antique looking, a little bit more classic, so Korean traditional. And this is our um, gallery design too. We have many different gallery designs, but this is one of them because or Scott's our expert on pearl. So we're going to do more and more tours to doing our pearl. In fact, next year, we're gonna have a, a wonderful pearl exhibition in November. So uh, would love for you guys to follow us and, and keep up on that. Cause we're gonna have some incredible pearl artists from around the world. Uh, Melanie Georgiakopoulos, uh, Kiwan Wong, Peter Schmidt, Peter Schmidt, Cindy Summers. Cindy Summers is going to do some pieces. Uh, Lynn Stanonis is going to be there. And then the uh, Polish, I forgot the name. Scott, are you guys going to have a vir virtual uh, 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 exhibits? You know, I think that's something we're moving towards that. You know, again, you know, our whole concept was to be anti digital. <laughs> But we're understanding how the world is changing, so we have to kind of adapt. And, and yeah, I think we're going to be trying to, uh, again, with the YouTube channel, et cetera, we're trying to do more and more. And like I said, during the, um, during the pandemic, we had a lot of meetings that were done via video. Yeah, also, you know, our, when you go to our website, I think we showed the whole history of the shows that showing. We always have that part that that the exhibition. So you probably can feel a little bit of uh, what we've been doing, what we've been done. Yep. So um, we just added another gallery here, um, a gallery space, I should say. A little bit before I turn it on. And uh, so this is a uh, more devoted to art jewelry, some fine jewelry. So we have, as you, it, just like I said, we always kind of showing it in very the balanced ways. Like there's a wearable sculpture, and then there's a fine jewelry, and also we're very uh, we're going to be more and more forced to curl because the expertise on Scott and plus that uh, we. <laughs> have an incredible of pearl and uh, permanent collections. And so we're, we're very excited about uh, more gear towards the future doing a pearl. Yeah. And you can see there's, again, more pieces by Susan Biner. And it's fine art like um, Don Percella to show oh, them together. Again, we mentioned Don Percella being uh, doing the uh, holiday windows at Hermes. And he's very well known for his pipe cleaner sculptures. Oh. And the windows there in, uh, in New York, they were all pipe cleaner. I think all seven windows I, he had. And I mean, they were monumental sculptures made of uh, pipe cleaner. Sure. You can definitely go find, I think, Architectural yeah. Digest or lots of people did uh, the window reviews in New York. And so, and, you want to show to the first? Yeah. Okay. So this is this is the uh, more uh, kind of storage unit, but also the, the we don't show uh, outside. There are a lot of works. Well, actually, we sold more pieces here than outside. So the this is the uh, collectors. I call the collectors room. So we do show to the our collector. To come here to look at some of the stuff that we're not showing out there and yeah. this is what we use for uh 25 cents experience like uh, serve the tea and things like that but anyway thank you yeah so i'd like to to uh, yeah again if anyone has a question please i'd love to answer it if not, i am speechless uh, we'll sign so, it's totally speechless this is absolutely so amazing i very inspirational it, it's making me thinking with my jewelry of the context in which I show it. Yeah, I think it deserves uh, that our jewelry definitely deserves their own environments besides the body. 
Well, thank my you very first, much. Yeah, my first jewelry teacher, Paulette Meyer in uh, St. Louis, had a woodworker construct a little platform to display the, the pieces when they weren't being worn. Now, I thought that was brilliant. I've never seen anybody do that, but that's what, that's what you're doing because it's obvious that a vase can be out and enjoyed, but jewelry usually goes in the drawer. So this, this way it became a piece of sculpture, which is amazing. Yeah. It, it, they d definitely deserve life outside of the body too. <laughs> And I like those metal plates that you had. Where did you, where, where were they from that were, the jewelry was displayed in one room? One of the, one of the, uh, the artist's uh, husband, who's uh, actually an exhibitor, he does a lot of museum work museum, for the museum. So he actually uh, designed it with us together. So everything we do when we're doing it, we kind of work together to do how to make the best art. Each show has an incredibly um, unique and different each year because we have wearable show once a year. And now we're going to do pearl show the biennium. And in between, we're going to probably have other wearable sculpture, but we do one. And then sometimes we put all together to find arts and business. So it's like I said, I don't, I don't even know how to differentiate it or how to differentiate the display. So I always put together and, you know, your energy is amazing and your enthusiasm <laughs> is very catching. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's our goal. That's our, 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 we really want our artists' work to be seen and we want to share art with everyone. That's, that's the main mission. And we've Could been you, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about what kind of collectors you show, um, have in your area? I mean, oh, they... yeah, we have a collector is mainly from Phoenix. From Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, and here too, here too, but I think uh, Missouri is a Phoenix. And how do they know about you? I have this feeling you're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> oh, that's not true. <laughs> it's not middle of nowhere. Uh, mm, Phoenix, because I think when we came, yeah, first moving into the, for, for, um, to, from Korea to here, um, we actually, at the time, there's not really many galleries or nor the, um, yeah, so we, we are a collector ourselves. We collect many things, even my children collect everything. <laughs> so we go to Phoenix to start to get to connection by, because we went to, we uh, collect through the many galleries and people saw me that how I wear things and what I do, it's kind of, sometimes I wear really interesting and weird, odd, whatnot. My kids sometimes teasing me about mom, maybe that down, take this, add it on this. So anyway, so we, we actually purchased that and then we got connected to people actually buy from my, out of my neck. They want to say, oh, I'm going to London and I don't have time. Can I just buy from you? From you? So I actually sold some of my made, some of my permanent collection, whatnot. So, and then some of the, my clients are like, kind of like, well, I don't think I can afford you, but I can support your artists. So why don't you open up some uh, the, uh, wearable sculpture? Yeah, at the time, of course, they didn't say wearable sculpture because I, we created them. We yeah. made it at work, what did you say? So they say, why don't you have a jewelry gallery? You know, so I said, hmm, I, well, let me think about it. But then at the time we created, we was almost the end to do all the creation, all this done, our, our all this uh, housing. So I said, hmm, gallery sounds not bad. So we thinking about it, we talked about it in many years. <laughs> We're very procrastinating. So we did it and then we opened up and some other like uh, clients from there and this tier that promises to connect to them supporting our artists to connect. And then we have many new or what, but that's what happened. I have a suggestion. I think you should get a trench coat. And when you open it, you have all your <laughs> There you go. I, I saw a question about there. Do we live in this space? No, we do not. Um, we, we live in a residence uh, near next door uh, behind the Korean garden. Yeah, we have four half. Oh, let me see. We have how many buildings? We have many buildings, but we have about four houses so so what we, we were lucky enough that we we were purchased 
we purchased a corner basically of an area and that, that has allowed us to expand. And one reason that we're gonna be using the um, AV area as a tea um, garden or tea dinner space is because uh, we're going to be moving the AV area over our, the chickens moved to a different place. Chickens and peasant, but they're, but they, they no longer live here. <laughs> and so by the end of the summer, we should have that space um, fully functional a fully operational tea garden. And, and Susan you, has a question. Yeah. Do you travel to do exhibits? Quite, yes. quite often, you know, we really, uh, the pandemic of course played havoc with everything. And, right. you know, we had right before the, the pandemic hit, we had a show lined up in Seoul. Um, uh, Didn't well, you see that there are all the things we done in like uh, in Korea, did all the food and, yeah, something no, like that. No, yeah, but she's saying, but we've been, the past few years we've been stuck. Yeah, we couldn't do it because the Korea is very, very chaos and hectic right now. So it, it's been delayed. Well, this I, is the I mean, this, this country. Huh? In this country. Yeah, New York. Yeah. We have not done New York. We have done New York, but uh, you know, I, we did a many times Phoenix and then sometime privately we done some California, but we didn't do extravagant there because some other clients that know each other, kind of know each other too. We done some small privately doing for mainly for sale because uh, in summer the, the, art, the artist needs it. It's not like about matter about us, but it's more towards the, for the artists that we do something privately, we're doing things. And I want to do, because, it, you know, I was very doubt when I was in Korea, I said, should I do the private or not? But it actually was necessary. It was a wonderful experience to doing a private, small, very school, it's very high level of the private show was absolutely needed. Uh, not needed, but like uh, supporting my artists, it was very helpful. But uh, yeah, we liked exhibiting in big scale, like in, with the gallery, with the museum, and because we enjoy it. But it's so much work. Like, yeah. But well, yeah. especially internationally, uh, because you have to do all the customs forms and and uh, the manifest, manifest, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite complicated. But uh, I would welcome the chance to do more here in the U.S. Yeah, and then it's probably website show that we done in the uh, Hamburg and the Berlin and France but and all that stuff. But it, in domestically, I would gladly believe if you want to invite us. I would love to do it, <laughs> you know, because uh, I love Miro because I went to Rhode Island School of Design and part of time that I lived in New York for, for a while and too. So I love New York, so Long Island. And um, yeah, if you were interested in something, we can do something that efficient. Thank you. Thank you. It's just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It was really a wonderful tour. Well, yeah. And I hope I get to meet uh, some of you in person sometime. And if not, you know, like I said, if you have a question about any of the artwork or the artists, you know, uh, we welcome FaceTime calls or, or Skype calls. Thank you. Oh, oh, by the way, we were thinking about doing a, a we're doing a new website right now. Uh, just transition of the making a new design, new website, and plus the follow up with new website with the uh, web store. So if you anybody interested in something, uh, we always because I can tell you I can ask this is because for the, my artist. <laughs> so uh, you know if you anybody interested in it, that would be great to, to look at our web store in the future. Thank you for sharing such eclectic art in such a unique place. Well, it, was thank you so much. it was delightful meeting you. <laughs>